Okay, all welcome back. This is session number two in a five-part series about perfecting saxophone basics. All right. Last week we talked about repertoire or learning songs. I considered that at number five to be the fun one, right? Memorizing songs and getting uh, you know the chord changes and all that into your into your intellectual hopper, right? Having that so that you can play, which is kind of the point of all this. Today we're going to go, we're going to drop the hammer. We're going right for ground zero, the hardest part of all, developing your sound. In other words, your tone, the resonance of your instrument, right? And uh, saxophonists, saxophonists use, um, in fact, I'm guessing all wind instruments, uh, use an exercise called the long tone. And there's nothing hidden in that. A long tone is exactly what it sounds like. Play a note on the saxophone, hold it for as long as you can, and you do this daily. This is an exercise that you do every day. Maybe, I mean, for the rest of your natural playing life. I've been doing them since I discovered them in high school. Right? I must have been 15 or 16 in high school, and somebody showed me that, that what long tones can do for your sound, which is to make it better. So let's... Uh, Get this uh, exercise going with your horns. Go grab your horns because this we're going to do a play along here on a long tone exercise. We're going to do that in a couple of minutes. So get your reeds wet, get that brass warm, get your fingers ready. Actually, it's not a really hard exercise, but it is the one that's really going to help you. So like I said, we get 50 people together in a room, 50 sax guys, 50 sax men and women, and they all have different ways to do long tones. And that works for them. I want to go back to ground you know, zero, the, the Sigurd Rasher wrote a book called Top Tones for the Saxophone. Top Tones for the Saxophone. Wrote it a long time ago, and uh, it's been like a Bible for so many saxophonists, saxophonists, saxists, saxophone warriors. How many ways can you say sax player, right? That I want to use that today. The very simple exercise, and we're going to start by fingering and playing your low B flat. We're going to be using the harmonic overtone series. Now, we don't have time in this lesson to talk about what exactly harmonic overtones are, the science of all that. There are pages, there are brochures, there are websites. You can look all that stuff up on your own. Just trust me that it'll work, okay? And it'll help you to, you know, just really boost your sound. So we're going to start by playing low B flat. You guys all ready? Everybody ready here? Low B flat. Not using your octave key, by the way for the next step in this. Step one though, is low B flat. And I hope you can play a low B flat. You ready to go here? All right, we're gonna do it all together. One, two, three, and four. Oh, that sounded bad, didn't it? About like an eight count, easy eight count. Three and four. getting a good B-flat or the B-flat's not coming out. That's why we're here. My mind, mind worked in the beginning, too. Don't worry about it. Three and four. All right. In the harmonic overtone series, we'll call that one the fundamental, the lowest of the tones. The next up will be the octave. So while we're fingering low B-flat, we're actually going to play the middle B-flat. No way. Yeah, don't use your octave key. It'll break out. Just speed the air up, adjust your embouchure a little bit, and it'll work. All right, how was that for you? Did you do it? Let's try it again. Three and four. All right, do make sure you have all the keys pressed down, not the octave key, all the B-flat keys pressed down. You heard mine warble just a little bit in there. And because that wants to go back home to that low B-flat or break to the next harmonic overtone, which is gonna be an F, right? Here we go, three and four. <laughs> All right, 
just a little bit faster on the air, maybe just a little bit of adjustment in the embouchure, and you can make an F come out while you're fingering low B flat. We're still at low B flat. Let's play that out. Take a big breath, go back to low B flat. Let's go to middle B flat. Still fingering low B flat. You got it? Okay. You're on your way to better tone. Do this every day. Extra points for using a metronome. Put the clicker on. Run a little click track behind you so that you know how many beats you can hold the note before it starts to degrade. When the note breaks, when it degrades, stop. Don't learn how to play it badly. Only do long tones on a good, strong note, right? That's important. Don't, don't sit there and, and blow a crummy note for like, I don't know, whatever. And keep track, of, keep track of the count. How long can you actually hold that note? The idea and the goal, of course, is to be able to hold that note longer and longer and longer each time, okay? Sigurd Rasher, excellent stuff. Now, with you know, you can do those overtones, by the way, all the way up to notes that only dogs can hear. And the studio dogs, by the way, are very unhappy because they just get hollered at by me because they're barking and making noise. And I couldn't, I've, this is the fifth take today. So I know. Anyway, you can, you can blow overtones all the way up to like amazingly high altissimo tones. We're not going to go there today. All right. Just get control of the three that we did today. Okay. Start with low B flat. Just like that, okay? Or any of the exercises. If you get the book, Sigurd Rasher has written out some nice exercises that you can follow along and use, all right? All right, don't do this while you're watching TV. No long tones while you're watching TV. Be mindful while you're doing long tone exercises, okay? Think about, are you squeezing the horn? Ah, no squeezing. Are you biting the mouth? Are you biting? No, how's your posture? How about your arms? Are you winging up? No wings out, no sitting like this. Sit up straight. And make sure that you're putting a bunch of air into that horn. Air is the mother of all sound. You need to fill yourself up to capacity with air and keep topping off. Don't run out of air, okay? You don't need a new mouthpiece. You don't need a new horn. Now, there are... Okay, I mean, considering if, you, if you've got just one of those awful import horns that you paid two or three, you know, $200 or less for... You might need a new horn, okay? But if you've got a, you know, if your horn's in good repair, pads, everything is sealing, you're able to make those notes, that low B flat. And by the way, if you can't make low B flat, it could either be you or it could be some leaks here at the top of the horn. So get your horn serviced if need be. Um, and you probably don't need a new path, a mouthpiece unless you're still playing the mouthpiece, the introductory level piece that came with a horn and you've been blowing on that thing for a while. You might have outgrown it, but for the most part, no. Do spend more time with what you have. That's the one thing that kind of comes back every time is that my students or people that you know I, I, I work with don't spend a lot of time with the equipment that they have. So they never get better. Long tones, only do them if you want to have a better sound. Do be careful about your read management, right? That's, the, I mean, the buzzer. This is this is this is it right here. Make sure that you're taking good care of your reads. You got a good read because a bad read is a real showstopper, okay? Do practice with performance tone. Don't have a practice level tone and a performance level tone. One tone all the time. Performance level tone. Do use the metronome once again. Get that metronome going and have it going through your long tones. 
Keep a mental calculation of how many clicks you can hold that tone and keep it pretty. Not ugly, keep it pretty, all right? What about the upper stack of your horn? How about these, how about these, how about the babies up here? How about your high D, E flat, E, F, uh, F sharp perhaps? How do they sound? You alto players out there, how, how's the top stack of your, probably thin, huh? And I'm gonna guess a lot of you tenor players as well, all right? Because you don't spend time doing long tones here, okay? Now, when you do that, and I mean you need to do long tones on every note that your horn produces, right? Use ear protection, okay? Make sure you've got some kind of ear filter, some filtration, or, or your headphones, or your earbuds, or something, right? Don't just sit in a room and, and blow top tones or high tones because it, it could possibly uh, cause you trouble down the road, okay? Do listen and compare, all right? If you've got a record player, listen to records. If all you have is uh, your smartphone, whatever you have, listen to other saxophone players. Live is best. The problem with listening to uh, saxophone players uh, off of YouTube, for example, is that the sound is processed. Uh, not only is it, has it been converted to an MP3, in other words, it's highly compressed. You know, you've got this, this big saxophone sound and it's squashed down by, by eliminating a lot of the information, background noise and resonance and heart, you know, all that stuff into this little package that can be, that can be uploaded quickly to social media. That takes out a lot of the beautiful resonance that a saxophone makes. So the best way is to find a great teacher with good sound emulate that teacher. Uh, go do, listen to sax players live. If you can, um, a lot of that has uh, gone by the wayside over the years, but if all you got is mp3s, if all you got is downloads, hey, that's what you got, okay? So listen and record yourself. Pick somebody that you really like, like a, like a, like a sound that you like. Realize that buying the same <laughs> equipment that they own is not going to make you sound like them, but work on that. Listen, re play, record yourself, listen, compare, play, record yourself. You are a self-teaching unit. You will learn how to do this. And repetition, that's the word. Repetition is your superpower. Work on your sound every day, okay? The goal, your goal, all right? In, in, in session number two of perfecting the basics, all right, is to be clean, have a beautiful sound from low B flat all the way to F, top F or F sharp, all right? Clean start, good sustain, beautiful sound. Fill the room with your saxophone. It naturally, look at this thing, man. This, this is an amplifier, basically. And it naturally wants to bounce off all of the walls in this room and just be amazingly beautiful, okay? You've got beautiful dynamic range on this thing that, you know, a lot of other instruments don't have. Or go outside. Get rid of the roof and just sit outside on a park bench somewhere. I think Lenny Pickett famously talked about that he sat in a park in Oakland and when he was first learning how to play clarinet and saxophone. He just did long tones outside, long tones and scales. Try those outside. You sound, you know, it's a much flatter, less resonant sound, but do it, all right? And work nonstop at this until you can execute tone perfectly. I mean, every note. You got, a, you got any notes in here that aren't working? you know what to do now. All right, questions, reach out to me, davegoodsax at gmail.com, davegoodsax at gmail.com. All right, I'll see you next week for our next edition of Mastering the Saxophone Basics. All right, all right. Once again, any questions, comments, leave them below. Hit that subscribe button if this thing is good for you. If it helps you out, I hope it does. All right, catch you later. I gotta go, I gotta go rescue those studio dogs. All right.